Hey guys, Alex here, and in this video, we're gonna be going over putting castor oil in my hair for the next 28 days each night. I'm gonna be updating you guys every seven days on seeing how we're making progress and let you guys know how we go. All right guys, so we chose castor oil for a variety of reasons. The biggest one is it's got a very high concentration of something called ricinoleic acid. It's an omega-9 fat that when applied to our hair actually helps block some negative effects of hair loss. The mentioned rinoceolic acid actually has a lot of interesting properties. From being an antimicrobial, an anti-inflammatory, and even an antioxidant, it has a lot of great benefits to adding to your hair. Now, there's been no direct studies of how castor oil has an effect on hair loss. However, there has been shown a lot of interesting information about how it could benefit hair loss. And in that case, that's why we're so intrigued. So castor oil has been known to be a great blocker of something called prostaglandin D2 or PGD2. Now there's been some studies found that PGD2 is found in a lot of baldy men's scalps. And that's something we're hoping to block with my scalp as well. If you're interested in looking more into that, we're not gonna go too far into the study right now, but we will have a link down below for you guys to look at the fine details. So as we said before, Castor oil has a lot of interesting properties from anti-inflammatories to antimicrobials and as well as antioxidants. Now, with all that being said, you guys might know that inflammation of the scalp really does have an effect on hair loss. And that's why some of the properties of castor oil being an anti-inflammatory can help an awful lot. So inflammation of the scalp is a big issue because as your scalp gets inflamed, it actually restricts the blood flow to the hair follicles and can reduce the necessary nutrients to help with hair growth. Another great benefit of the rhinocelic acid is its antimicrobial and antifungal properties, really helping people with bacterial or fungal infections of the scalp and helping them with regrowth. Now, for some of you guys who are thinking a little castor oil on the head is gonna help, so maybe if I drink a little, it'll help too. Don't do that, unless you want a planned date with a toilet. This has been used a lot of times as a laxative, so let's not go that route, all right? Now, prior to using your scalp, you're gonna wanna test this on your hair first. Now, in this case, I already have, so I don't have any issues. However, some people have reported about some inflammation, some redness, or itchiness. So what you want to do is test this on a small spot first to make sure you don't have a reaction, and then you can go right on ahead. Now, for this experiment, I told you guys, I'm gonna do this every day for 28 days. Now, in my case, I'm gonna be applying this castor oil to my hair each night and leaving it in overnight. Now, for some of you who don't wanna do that, you can leave them for 20 to 30 minutes and then wash it out with cool water as usual. So in the essence of science, just to keep things consistent, I'm not gonna be doing anything else from derma rolling, scalp massaging, nothing else but applying the castor oil each night. So I'll be doing my normal routine of three shampoos a week, and then after I apply this guy, I'm just gonna rinse it out with just water. So the interesting thing about castor oil is it's a little thicker than other oils like olive oil or canola oil. So application needs to be taken a little bit slower. You wanna take little bits at a time and apply it from the base of your hair all the way out to the end, just so you can avoid having an over application. So like I said, guys, I'm gonna be doing this each night. Seeing as it's still middle of the day right now, no application right now. But on the next video update, I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply this, so stay tuned. All right, guys, one week update with the castor oil challenge. Now I've been putting this in my hair every night for the last seven days and leaving it in overnight, and I've got a little feedback for you. That and I realized we didn't actually show you how to even apply this stuff, so we're gonna get into that real quick. Now, if you guys have done some research before on adding castor oil to your hair, many people recommend you actually add olive oil to help kind of balance things out because castor oil is a pretty thick oil. Now, in the name of science, I told you guys I'm only gonna be applying the castor oil itself, so I didn't get to use this, but if it's something you wanna do, have at it. But for this experiment, we're gonna stick with just the castor oil. Now for me, I've been doing it like this. I actually just take a very simple spoon and I grab just a bit of this stuff here. And the reason for me is because I'm only applying this to the top of my hair. And some people might wanna apply it all over the head. I only actually want this on the crown of my head. So in that case, I only need a little bit. So results may vary. But for me, I actually fill it up to just about there. If you guys can take a look, it's not quite full. And for me, you guys might be able to see right in here, we just take a bit of this oil and pour it into the top. And what's really important is to let it kind of work its way in and grab it from the base and let it soak into the hair a bit as well as you work it in. So as you do this, your hair will be kind of coated and it will feel quite a bit smoother and more oily. Now, here's something I learned, <laughs> I wish I would learn the first day, but learned a bit later. If you're gonna do this, definitely get yourself a towel and wrap your towel 
around your pillow. Otherwise, you wake up with a big oily mess. Cue my experiment. So now you know. That's all for me. Uh, the only hair growth I've seen so far has been on my face, but uh, as to be expected, we're only one week in. But I am pretty hopeful here on the next few weeks. So I'll give you guys an update and talk to you soon. All right, everybody, Alex here, back with the second week update for our castor oil hair experiment. Now, I'm gonna call this one the moist update. Now, not only it being the least favorite word of the English dictionary, it's the only word I could come up with for what's going on with my hair. So I've not seen any real difference in the hair growth so much, and I'll let you see that in a minute, but more so I've actually been feeling a different complexion, if you will, about my hair. And I'll, let me explain. So as I've been applying this oil overnight, and maybe it's because I have it on so long, I obviously have like that kind of oily feel overnight and I wake up and I shower it off. But the difference is, like I said, I, I modestly shampoo. I actually don't feel a huge difference from when I have it in to when I have it out. So kind of like after you condition your hair, how it feels softer and smoother, that's kind of what I'm getting all the time now. And I'm really curious to see if that would stop after I stop using the castor oil or if it continues on after, but I guess that's kind of what we'll follow up on at the very end. So that's that. Uh, with that in mind, let's do a quick hair check. And I'm not sure I still see kind of the the same things other than my natural like Superman swoosh here, which I've always had. Um, it's all kind of the same so far. But again, I, I am hopeful. My hair does definitely feel better, so that's a plus. Um, other than that, yeah, that's it, guys. So I'll let you know on week three, and we'll go from there. Talk to you soon. All right, guys, third week update on the castor oil challenge. I'm running pretty low, but I've got some new information for you. Uh, first thing, I know I said uh, in the beginning, maybe use a towel for your pillow. Much better idea. Try a shower cap. Just before going to bed, I'll put one of those crinkly boys on top, and it really helps keep all the oil on the head and not on the pillow. So now you know. Second thing, uh, definitely feel like my scalp has gotten like softer. We've been adding this oil for a few weeks now, and we did talk about how there's a lot of ricinolic acid in there, which can really help kind of clean and take care of the head. Well, I'm definitely feeling that. And on that note, I've actually noticed a real decline in any kind of dandruff. Now, I didn't have much before, but if I check now and give it a good shake, I got nothing. So that's an awesome perk. Um, along with my hair feeling soft, you know, my nice shining locks, uh, having a happier scalp and less dandruff is definitely looking good. Now, the whole point of this whole thing was to see about hair growth, and I don't know about that one still, but you guys be the uh, judges on that one. Let's take a quick look right in here. Oh, wow. I know some of you guys talk about using the same light. I try to aim for having natural light for you guys to look at and see what you think. I know for me, I take a look at a lot of different lights and I'm not seeing a real change in growth, but I am seeing a change in quality of hair. And I guess that's really a big perk. I mean, what more can you ask for other than new hair? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's that. Uh, as I said, I am really interested to see if some of this soft kind of hair that I have now from applying the oil will last uh, after we stop applying this but we'll know more here in the next few weeks. So there's week three, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. All right guys, so wrapping up our castor oil hair challenge. Now we're a little bit past week four and the reason for it is I told you guys I wanted to see if some of the benefits I had from applying this stuff would last after I stopped. So pleasant update, honestly, after I've put it in, I just shampooed out, I stopped applying it at the fourth week mark for science. And what's cool is, even now, I still have a lot of the softness and kind of richness in my uh, hair that I'm really impressed with. Now, on that side, I want to say a couple of things. What I learned here was interesting. I like the way this stuff feels. The way we applied it at night for me was quite easy, but I think for some people it's a bit much. So as I talked about in the very beginning, applying this overnight or even just applying it for 20 to 30 minutes is totally up to you. I wanted to go the distance and honestly for hair growth, I'm not super impressed. For hair health fullness and like softness and general scalp health, I'm really impressed. As I may have mentioned, the high amounts of ricinolic acid in this stuff is a lot of great benefits to our hair from prostaglandin inhibitin, uh, the antimicrobial, antifungal, and even antioxidant properties. 
I can really tell the difference. I mean, honestly, my head and my scalp does feel better. And so I thought to myself, with what I have left, I'm actually gonna start using it a bit on my face. As I talked about earlier, some people recommend adding olive oil, and I'm gonna do exactly that. Now, we do have an olive oil video previously that we've done about our hair, and you can check that out. But when you blend the two, I'm thinking we might have some magic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend the two, put it on my hair, and guys, bonus tip, it's supposed to help a lot for this too. So if you have some patchy spots, give it a shot. Other than that though, for hair growth, not super impressed real quick. Uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like if you wanna see. Uh, again, my crown is really the problem spot. And no real change. But again, it does feel great. So that's my recommendation. If you guys wanna make your hair quality improve, give it a go. If you're looking for growth, I'm not so sure. But uh, that's all I got for now, and I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment, and talk to you soon with the next ones.